everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, today I'm doing a monochromatic cloud pour, uh, straight pour. Cloud pour is basically just a straight pour with the satin enamel paints. Um, and uh, yeah, so the colors that I'm using today, I have, uh, this is my favorite color combo, uh, Liquitex Basics uh, Thalo Green with Thalo Blue. These colors together are absolutely gorgeous. I also, uh, for this base coat, have added a bit of titanium white. This is Liquitex Basics Titanium White. There was a mishap with the original container. Um, so I added the blue and the green together. It is mostly green, just a little bit of blue. And I added a bit of the titanium white to it to brighten it up so it wouldn't be so dark. And uh, these two paints here, these are going to be the cell makers. So this is 50% as far as the paint mixture goes, the paint. 50% of the satin enamel and then 50% whatever other paints you're going to use. So you can use any color. You can mix any color with this and, and get cells in a straight pour. So I did the satin enamel and the titanium white together for both of these. And then I added some of my base color to each of these cups. This was just one drop. It's just enough to make it um, a very, very pale green as opposed to being white. And then I added a bit more of it to this color. And so all of these colors are in the same color family. They're just different values of the same color. And it creates these beautiful 3D cells uh, in your painting. If you want more information on how I mix these, uh, there is, um, my Patreon is up. I'm still getting content up there. I know it looks kind of empty. <laughs> it's under construction. Um, but I, I put it up so that people would have an opportunity to tell me what they want to see. If they're, you know, anything that uh, would entice them more to, to sign up um, so do check that out. Uh, it's, we're going to be having, um, Zoom meetings, Q and A's, um, and, uh, like happy hour slash socials on Zooms. I'll even be doing some, uh, musical performances now and then, uh, there'll be live streams of me painting, but I'm most excited about doing the Zoom so I can really get to know everyone. Um, the internet is so impersonal and you only see names and tiny little icons and, you know, I want to get to know people's faces and their voices and I want to be able to meet people face to face, you know, but I can't meet everybody face to face. We're all over the globe. So we can do it over Zoom. And there's also, um, a private Facebook group for the Patreons, uh, so it'll be easier for me to interact with people on a smaller group, you know, go make some art is wonderful, but there's 60 something thousand people in there and it's really hard <laughs> to comment on everyone's post. I just can't possibly do that. But in a private Facebook group, we could totally do that. So check out the Patreon and to possibly entice someone who might be on the fence about signing up when it's still so new and there's not a lot of stuff on there, the first people, the first five people to sign up for the platinum and diamond tiers will get a piece of artwork from me. Um, so that'll be 10 pieces of artwork that I'll be sending out. So the first five people to sign up for the platinum and diamond tiers will get a free piece of art. So I hope to see you there. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card will have a video associated with it right here on YouTube that tells you everything that you need to know 
how to do the painting, the exact paint brands, colors, consistency, the recipe, uh, and of course the technique, all of the things that I can't fit on one card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for this particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in this painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also at amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do just want to make sure that I mention <laughs> these are mixed one part paint to two parts flow trial. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. One part paint to two parts flow trial. And that mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol. Until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, it's about two on my consistency scale. It does make a mound, but it disappears very quickly. It makes a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. It's not going thick to thin. It's like a pencil lead. Perfect stream. The first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my cup. I'm going to do just under two ounces. And the rest will be going on my canvas. I do still have a bit left in my cup just in case I need to drizzle on top. You'll see what I mean. I've already covered my edges. I always cover my edges when I'm doing straight pour. Actually, I cover my edges when I'm doing any pour. Um, it just eliminates uh, a thing that could go wrong, which is the paint not adhering to the sides as well as you would like. And that is even more prone to happen when you're using Floetrol. And so I would rather cover it ahead of time than uh, after the painting has dried, especially when I'm using a custom color like I am today. Okay, my base coat is down. I'm gonna pop these bubbles in my base coat so they don't pop up through my pour. And if you want another reason to join the Patreon, I will be putting uh, videos up on there uh, that are going on YouTube, but you can see the ad-free versions also uh, with some bonus content. Like when I put this one up, it's going to have how I mixed it. But there's also going to be other kinds of art that I'll be doing on there that probably won't end up on this channel because, you know, algorithm things. Um, so I'll be doing some block printing and watercolor on there and alcohol ink and having all kinds of fun. And hopefully taking y'all on that journey with me and we can all experiment together. And there will be challenges that we'll be doing, monthly challenges. We're going to have a lot of fun over there. Just bear with me while I, while I build a, a whole new community. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the mid-tone here and I'm going to pour from up high. I want this to sink and churn. Remember to check your consistency before you put it in your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing as this one has. So I will add a couple of drops of my Floetrol mix.
Very important step to uh, check that consistency. Those polymers, as they sit, they swell up. Okay, again, coming in from up high, allowing it to sink and churn. And then I have a bit of this paint left over. This is why I'm going to come in over top. You have a better chance of getting cells if all of your cell makers are touching your base color. So your cell makers are the satin enamel or the deco art paints, matte paints specifically, any kind of matte paint and background paint is a glossier paint and so you get this reaction it's a hydrophobic effect okay I'm going to start from up high and I will move closer but I want them to churn at first I will get closer when I want more control this is way more paint than I need it And as I get towards the center or towards the end of my cup, I will give it a little Fibonacci twist. It's kind of my thing. And when I do these straight pours, the reason that I mix the way that I do, or the reason that I put them in the cup the way that I do, The, cup, the color that goes in first and the color that goes in last, I want contrast. So, in this case, I have the darkest color in the cup first, and I put in the lightest color last. And when you pour it from up high, when it's the right consistency, it will, that last color, some of it will sink to the bottom. There will be a tiny bit of it left in the bottom of the cup and that will come out last. And so that gives you this great contrast in the center and it looks like the painting is glowing. Now, if I did it the other way, if I had the lightest color as my background, so say I had white then my darkest color would be the last color that I put in the cup. And then it's going to look like it's backlit. So when the darkest color goes in first, it looks like the center is glowing. And when the darkest color goes in last, it looks like it's lit from behind. Super cool effect. Okay. I'm going to pop these bubbles. Now you'll see, as I pop these bubbles, all these little tiny cells pop up. So that is the reason why we torch our base coat before we pour, because if those bubbles were in the base coat, when those bubbles come up, it brings some of that base coat color with it. So if you've ever used a white base coat, but there was no white in your painting, in your pour, and then you wind up with these tiny little white pin cells that's what that is it's bubbles from your base coat but with these satin enamels with the Americana decor line in general when those bubbles come up and it brings that paint with it because that paint is matte it has a, a hydrophobic effect and it is pushing away the background color, the glossier paint, which in this case is the dark green. Teal, it's more of a teal at this point than green, but. So, you see these cells pop up and then they keep getting bigger. And that's why I let it sit. Let that paint puddle percolate because as I let these cells come up, and they grow when I stretch this painting, when I tilt these paints off, 
the cells will stretch they will get bigger and uh, this looks like a manatee oh or maybe maybe a little water bear little little tardigrade um but yeah so if you allow the cells to develop before you tilt you will get bigger cells I could have just tilted this right away and still gotten cells, but they would have all kind of been like, you know, this size. But when I tilt this and I stretch it, and I'm going to do a lot of tilting because there's a lot of paint on here. I measured poorly. Um, but as I let this develop, I will get more cells. And I'll be able to stretch them out. And I'll see even more little white cells are popping up when I do that. And they will stretch out. So if I allow them to develop first, they become bolder cells. If I were to stretch it right away and they popped up later, it would kind of have more of um, like what people call pearl cells. I call them pop-up cells. Um, and they would be more uniform in size, but I like stretching them and getting that awesome 3D effect. Okay. I think this is good because a lot of this is going to get tilted off and then this is going to stretch out. One more pop of the bubbles. I don't like to torch the satin enamels after I tilt. The only time I've ever had cracking is when I torched after I tilted. I'm going to go in this direction first. Okay, and I will go to the opposite corner. Bringing the paint back to center before I change directions. This is how you keep your cells shape. You don't want to go back and forth and back and forth and you want to be very deliberate. always bring the paint back to center before you change directions. If you find that you're winding up with cells that have just turned into lines or wind up with squiggles in them, a lot of times it's because you didn't come back to center. Okay, I'm just going to adjust this for composition to how I want it. The weight of your paint is what you really need to be keeping an eye on, and that's going to be wherever it's moving the fastest wherever the paint seems to be moving the fastest. And so you can use that paint, the weight of the paint, to get very specific about what you're pushing around. You know, I could use the weight of the paint to just, if I had a little section like this that I wanted to tilt off, I could do that by being mindful of the weight of my paint. Okay. I think that's going to be it for this one. I'm going to let it do what it's going to do. There are some super cool cells in here. Super cool cells. These it's like ripples. Very interesting. Very interesting cells. Okay. I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes. I'm going to bring you in for a close up back in a few.
Okay, here it is. Check out these funky cells. Hi, Bigsby. Look at that. I just think they are so cool looking. It's like, like ripples in a pond or something. Abalone shell without the bling. Really interesting effects though. There it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, if you are subscribed, please make sure you have clicked that bell so you receive notifications when I have new uploads, YouTube changed something and people aren't receiving notifications anymore. Um, check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined, uh, not expect it, but definitely appreciate it. Uh, my affiliate links, Deco Art being one of them, if you want to get your hands on some of this awesome Deco Art cell making magical paint, uh, you can head over to their website, use the link in the description box. Um, there's a coupon code. And anything that you purchase off of that website using my link or the coupon code, I receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. And check out the Patreon. Ad free content coming at you there. Lots of behind the scenes stuff. Lots of cool things going on. Uh, what else do we have in there? What else is in that description box? The link to my website, ginadeluga.net. Where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. And of course, the cards are also on Amazon. And last, but most certainly not least, uh, you will find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Join us there, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. But uh, that is it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.